All right, here we are back again. We are back together this week. I am back from Ultra Four Lands of Kentucky. We are here to give you another episode of Dirt to Dust. Um, before we go any further, um, I, I, Caleb, I didn't tell you I was going to do this in our little pre-meeting, but um, uh, there's some congratulations in order. Uh, maybe just a little bit. <laughs> come on. Come on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My man we, got married. I, I got married. He pulled a little bit of a fast one on on everybody. <laughs> Hot damn! We uh we have a we have a ceremony planned for May in uh, the mountains of North Carolina, um but we have severely limited that number of people there because the spot that we chose it overlooks the uh, um the gorge I forget which gorge um but Glenville Gorge Glenville Gorge yes thank you yeah um I was drawing a blank there for a second but yeah it overlooks that but the spot we chose really can only fit maybe six to eight people at most. Um, but we love it and it looks good. It's going to look phenomenal on camera and be me, me. I've got to have good photos and videos of this. So, uh, while Britt and I were doing the paperwork and we were like, you know what? We could just eliminate every bit of the paperwork option and just have like legal documentation day. Um, and that's what we did. Had the magistrate sign off on it and threw a little party and then surprised the entire family. Cause no one knew anything. Uh, we were already going to have a little party <laughs> just kind of to celebrate anyways. And we just announced it there and everyone was crying and boohooing and it was awesome. And <laughs> it's probably the best way that we could possibly do this. <laughs> Smartest move you've probably ever made. You will not regret that decision. That is pretty awesome. So congratulations for me and the entire audience of Dirt to Dust. So well, thank you, let's thank you. get right after the first episode of Caleb being married. <laughs> when other people see dirt, you see glory and when you see a vehicle for the first time your first thought is not how pretty it is but how much abuse can it take this is dirt to dust presented by outlaw off-road if it's anything off-road and dirty we probably like it and we're probably talking about it you'll get industry info tech talk and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry let's do it this is dirt to dust and now your hosts doug langford and caleb forbes all right let's get rolling with this episode of dirt to dust like we said before the uh the intro kind of got over overtaken by the the news that uh, Mr. Forbes is now Mr. and Mrs. Forbes. Um, we kind of all knew it was coming. I, nobody really knew it was coming <laughs> that quickly, but I think that's awesome. I wish, um, you know, I had the whole big wedding, rent out the vineyard and all that, and there's not, you know, it was cool. It was awesome having everybody there. I guess it was nice having all the people, but, you know, it's just so busy and there's so much going on. And years down the road, even my wife's like this. She's like, man, we should have just, like, gone somewhere. <laughs> Like, just gone somewhere, got married, just said the heck with the whole thing. So you you definitely did it right. I, I definitely can't take issue with that. So that, no, that's pretty awesome. Everyone I've I've told about the idea and, and now that everyone knows, like everyone's kind of says the same thing. It's like that was that's awesome, especially post COVID. I think that's just the way weddings are moving is is something small and intimate and then celebrate with family and friends however you want to. Um, well, I think it's awesome. Yeah. It kicked off the weekend with you getting married. We ended the weekend. Uh, and a little bit of Monday with the Hurricanes being 2-0 and in the NHL Stanley Cup. Oh, such a good game. <laughs> oh, <man>. So good. <laughs> Holy crap. Last night's game, man. I'm sitting there watching it. And you guys might, you know, if you're here and listening, whatever, you can't really see it, but you can definitely hear it. My voice is a little different. I kind of been battling this voice thing for the last week or so. And, you know, I was I was like, man, I think I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to watch a little bit of the game. I head to bed early tonight. But the Canes went down three zip pretty early. Mm-hmm. And I thought that game was over. I mean, I've watched, I watch a lot of Hurricanes hockey. I go to a lot of Hurricanes games. Never count them out. Uh, I think they're, I think they're actually no. still the betting favorite to win the Stanley Cup, which is crazy. I would love That's crazy. Yeah. It. I mean, 2006 was the last time they won it. Um, but they've got a great team. They, they got a really deep team. They got talent on all four lines. All their defensive pairs are awesome. They got two outstanding, really, yeah, two outstanding, um, goaltenders really really three technically um don't know if they're gonna be able to keep all three through the offseason but they've got three and it's just crazy and then they score one and then jarvis you know seth jarvis 24 scores another one 
And then I think it was Fetchnikov that brought out the the evener. And then nine freaking seconds later, Jordan Martinook with like the half Michigan thing off the steel. And it's like, what? Wait, wait, oh, score. It was absolutely crazy. And then I think Jake Gensel gets the one on the empty on the empty netter there. Uh, what minute, minute and a half left, two minutes left, whatever that was. And but that was pretty yeah. cool. So now they go to New York. Left. Now mm-hmm. they go to New York up to zip and, and looking pretty good. And I'm sure feeling pretty good. I think they're them and um I guess Boston and Tampa are the only ones that have gone two games in their series yet. And I think Boston, Tampa came back or not Tampa, but uh, the Leafs came back and won that game. So that series is one one, but Carolina's up two zip and feeling feeling pretty good about that. And then uh, I think the Knights beat the Stars last night which is another big game in my house because my son is a big fan of both the Knights and the Stars. Although he did say yesterday, I said, you know, you know, the Knights are playing the Stars on our way to hockey practice. And it was the end of one of the series of practices that they go to. They do like eight or nine lessons, and that's a block. And then you sign it for another eight or nine. So last night was the last block of eight or nine classes for his like second one this year. And I said, you know, what, 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 what jersey you want to wear to go get your picture? You get your picture done. He goes, oh, Golden Knights, Golden Knights. He loves the Golden Knights because of their cool pregame show. If you haven't ever seen that, Google it. It is pretty cool. I think the Golden Knights saw him now like 315-0 and 0 or something like that. He's never lost the battle. <laughs> so um, he said, yeah, I want the Golden Knights to win, which is weird because I thought he was a big Dallas Stars fan. But the Golden Knights won 4-3, so he's happy. Hurricanes won. They're up 2-0, so I'm happy. So that was really all good for the weekend, except um, except. <laughs> except we had this, <laughs> the other- this looming topic coming up for the podcast this week. Um, which the, the was other thing that happened this week, the other, the other thing, which was the race recap, um, which we as 4699 were not able to participate in the main race uh, on Saturday afternoon. So, um, yeah, I guess we're just going to do an episode on the race recap and what happened. And, you know, we are part of a team, so we'll talk about kind of what happened to the team. The team did take home the win. Team RK uh, did take home the win uh, at Kentucky, the battle in the bluegrass. A uh, little bit of controversy there is nobody was able to watch it. There was no live feed. Um, yeah, this past I tried weekend, to watch it too, which was mm-hmm. weird. Uh, I did not know that was going to happen that way. Um, and from talking to other drivers and teams and racers and co-drivers and all that, uh, they didn't know either. That that was something kind of yeah. weird. Um, for those that don't know, there was some there was some controversy last year uh, surrounding the ownership of the Ultra Four Series and Mid America Outdoor. Uh, Jason Robinette was the owner who bought the series a couple years back from Hammer King Productions, which is basically King of the Hammers and Dave Cole and and that investment group. Um, <clears throat> for whatever reason, family time, whatever, they said they wanted to kind of divest, so they did. I actually hear his big monster of a Alfred Park out in Oklahoma is up for sale, or maybe did sell too, the Robinettes. Uh, so I think that's gone. I think it's going to be like a giant RV park now. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it may be just rumors at this point, but I don't think it's anything super secret, but I think he is like completely out. Like the whole, I think the off road, you know, side by side racing series was supposed to be there, supposed to be gone. Like all that stuff's a mess. So a lot of a lot of people being affected by that. But this was the first race outside of King of the Hammers that was like back under the control of Hammer King Productions, and there was no mm. production. <laughs> really was yeah. was nothing. Miles Miles was there. He did on site announcing. Uh, Miles Hasselquist, which everybody knows, you know, kind of the voice, the guy with the, the you know the wrench microphone and all that. Pam Hall was there also. So they were there. Everybody kind of just assumed um, that there was going to be a thing, and there wasn't. So, um, you know, good on Pam. She kind of got on. I guess she has access to the Ultra 4 Facebook page. So she kind of took her phone and started, like, going around the races finally on Saturday. Um, but there was definitely no production. Um, so definitely some controversy there. I, I certainly wasn't a fan of it. I think we need a live show 100%. I threw my opinion on one of the private groups yesterday or or the, or a day before last that you know my opinion of was we need a live show it should be a requirement it should be non negotiable like that should be one of the backbones if you want to grow the sport sponsors need eyes um, sponsors want eyes on product they want eyes on what they're paying money and giving product to um, yes in our series forty six hundred but for sure in the higher series forty four hundred. 4,900, the open guys, those, those companies want as many eyes as possible on their products. And I think, I think you do a disservice to them and to the race teams when you don't have that kind of thing going out. Not to mention that, you know, everybody said, oh, there was no budget for it. We as racers paid twice as much to race at Kentucky this year. It was like 20 bucks less than 2X from what it cost to race a regional race last year. Last year was like 400 bucks a race. 
This shit was seven eighty, seven hundred eighty dollars. Not a big secret. I'm not giving away. Yeah, it was seven hundred eighty dollars to register. Now that's not including. We're not talking about what we pay for insurance or USAC or our hard card or any of that stuff. That was just the fees to go race the race. It was seven hundred eighty dollars. Um, now the purses were bigger, and I get that. Yeah, but you know, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what the deal there is. I don't know if that's a sign of different things to come. I don't know if that's a budget thing. I, I don't know. So I won't speculate on that. I just know I didn't mm-hmm. like it. <laughs> I was mm-hmm. not. Right. I was not a fan. Right. Uh, it turned out okay because nobody could see the race that I wasn't racing. So it ended up working out well for me. But <laughs> um, yeah, I you know I wish it was there. I wish we could have. You know, we did the couple. We did the social media. We do all that stuff, and I like to be able to post the link. You know, hey, watch this race. Not just to watch me, but to watch the sport because we want to help. We want the sport to grow. Um, that's what we, you know, that's the kind of the end goal, because if it grows, then it's more eyes on it, more eyes on it, more eyes on it, which, you know, we get sponsors and that's, it's financial, right? It's money, money makes the world go around. And so we want that. We need that. And, you know, sponsors and us as the sponsors out law for it also, we kind of rely on that when you don't have it, you know, it's kind of disconcerting, especially when you don't know, you know, that that's not a thing. Granted, we assumed it was going to be a thing, but um, this being the first one back under hammer King control to not have that. It was a little disappointing. It was a little disappointing. Um, kind of like the whole result of the weekend. But, you know, it's racing. We certainly didn't have the worst weekend. We didn't even have the worst weekend on the team. Um, and when I say team, I kind of refer to kind of it's it's kind of a, a two-way team. It's Team Rock Crawler and Team Warm Racing. So there's, there's a few cars of us in 4600 that always race together, camp together, help each other, work on each other's rigs, help each other during races, and that is 4699. 4688, which is John Schaefer, old orange, the old two-door JK. Uh, and then Sergio Pneos in 4655, which is that black and yellow Jeep. There's only one uh, 4600 two-door black JL uh, with the 36. Um, a well-built, quick little car, and it showed, unfortunately, it showed how well it was built in keeping Sergio safe in a two-and-a-half times rollover um, yeah, at, at uh, a decent I saw amount the of speed. aftermath. Luckily, it was, luckily, it was mm-hmm. in a turn, so he wasn't going really fast, but um safety crews were out there they were on it they got him out they got him off course quick he walked away was fine i was there with him three four minutes after they got it back upright i was over there he was fine um you know probably a little upset with the way it went down but physically um he was he was okay cars got some body damage uh for those of you going to jeep beach it's gonna be there still i don't even think he's gonna wash it i don't (laughs) think he's even gonna wash it Um, i I hope he doesn't i I don't think he is because that thing man so this race was at Bowling Green, Kentucky, Beach Bend, Beach Bend Raceway Park. And it's a giant park. It's got a campground. It's got a water park. Um, there's an amusement park there. There's a drag strip, giant drag strip. They were drag racing all weekend. We were there a little earlier in the year. The water park and the amusement park weren't open. I think there's talk of doing it later next year so that all the things are open. So it's a pretty cool spot um, right down the road from where I grew up in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, like an hour down the road, hour, hour and 15 minutes down the road, um, and really close to Nashville. Um, just a just a really good location, and the racetrack's like two miles outside of town. It's like we were going in town. We could go to Walmart. We'd go to Home Depot. We went to Cabela's. You know, we ate at like Texas Roadhouse. Like it was it was everything you'd want it to be. Um, but that track, only like half of it existed until two weeks ago. You know, when we got there, there was no flags. There was no um, there was no markings of any kind. There was nothing. It's it's kind of in this field. They got all these like hay fields fenced off. And the dirt track was kind of in this, <clears throat> in one of these fields. So they took bulldozers and they just started adding track. They added a couple turns. They added a couple straights. They, you know, they added a bunch of stuff to where it was, I think it was rough, just over one mile. I think, I think what I heard is 1.1 miles. I think, I think that's right. Um, and the aerial shot of it, super cool course. But of course, with any new track, you're going to have, you know, new track problems where it's not, it's not the smoothest thing in the world. When when you turn up that much dirt and it's all loose, everybody gets out there and practices and ends up getting on the same line. So you can run mm-hmm. one line. Ru- ruts it in. It ruts mm-hmm. it in. It was really hard to pass. Um, if you got outside the line at all, like I tried it during practice, and I would be like, all right, I'm going to try to get out of the line here. And even with all the horsepower I have, whoa, it was just rev, 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 and you just weren't going anywhere. It was just like you were in a mud bog. Um, it did dry out. Um, it did rain on us Thursday night, which kind of packed it down. And then Friday was nice. It was, you know, Friday, it was actually pretty good. 
the problem was, and I know why they do it. Saturday is sort of watering the track a lot to keep the dust down. And it got back, it turned it right back into a mud bog. A lot like Crandon was, where if you're behind somebody, you're just getting peppered. Just absolutely sprayed. The front of your car, fire suit from dash up, everything is just going to be covered in this in this dark, nasty Kentucky mud. Um, and, of course, if the, that mud's on you, it's not on the track. So that's ruts. That's how basically we're throwing mud out and we're making ruts. So um, those ruts can cause problems. They can be good. And <laughs> sometimes if you can get in them and you can stay in them, they're like train tracks, man. And but, you know, the bad part of that is tend, you tend to want to kind of drift the car a little bit at a short track. You don't really want to be on rails only because if you try to hit it too fast, all that weight transfer to the right and it stops the car from moving. And what happens? The left side comes up over you go. We did have we did have some of that. Um, not as much as I thought, uh, but when it happened, it happened quick. Um, wasn't a fan of some of the way some of the jumps were built. I think they built the jumps on purpose to slow us down. That's my personal opinion. Um, because the short, the, the straightaways were always bookended by like almost 180 turns. Uh, you didn't get 75, 80 feet off the start finish line before it was a hard left. And then another left with like jumps in it. And then it was back to the right. And then it was a really hard, then it was a really hard left. And then another hard left with like a bump in the middle and then down the hill to a jump. Um, and if anybody watched some of the stuff that was put out from that race, they saw the um, the 461, um, the the brand new built 461, the 4400 car, um, went endowed. the The problem was mm-hmm. the jump was built such that you know your front end you were nose diving on the landings, and everybody was doing it. We did it. Everybody did it. And the the conversation after the first practice, everybody was like, "Look, I think we're just gonna have to hit this really slow or really fast." I think it may be because the jump was built and there was this divot right at the base of the jump. And if you, we thought, we thought if you could hit it hard enough, clear the divot, um, that the front end wouldn't hit in the end of that divot and then be launched right back up because everybody was hitting and bouncing. And I did it a few times. I tried it at speeds anywhere from 30 to 50. And, you know, we were marking our speeds and I told Rob, my co-driver, who was on spotter on this, I was like, look, he's like, what's the speed? I said, but it's either got to be below 35 or over 50, but let's see what some of the other guys do. So during, uh qualifying we hit it at i think i hit it at 52 and and it did okay it was fine um but during later when the 4400s went out and i think it was during it was during qualifying it was 4400 qualifying i believe um he sent it a little faster than 52 um he didn't let up and it came over it sailed and the front end came down and when he landed it just went over and it, and it, and it, yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, um, so they, there was an ambulance on standby. The safety crews did their job. Everybody did their job. I mean, it's just racing. Like, it is what it is. You know, stuff happens. Um, but safety crews, first responders jump in, did their job. They took him over, precaution. They took him in a, in a helo out of the park, got him to the hospital. He was actually back walking around, standing next to his car the next day in camp. So he is fine. He's okay. I think, uh, I think, I think officially it was just a concussion, um, which, you know, if you were there and you saw this and you're going that much weight that fast, to be able to walk away from that with just a knock on the head and a concussion. Welcome to 2024 folks. <laughs> that is impressive. That is impressive. So that was kind of the big thing of the weekend. I guess, luckily there wasn't a, I guess, luckily there wasn't a uh, live feed for that one, but that happened on, uh, that happened on Friday. Um, that happened on Friday. We qualified on Friday, did really good during qualifying. Uh, we took a video of it. I actually found where we should have been pole, but we were second. So our plan was to John Rance actually got he freaking sent it, dude. <laughs> Qualified, man. Oh man. I, I pulled up next to him after the qualifier. He was like, man, it was on the edge the whole time. And I was like, man, that was a hell of a run. That was a hell of a run. Like it looked, it looked like you were just on the edge of complete out of control the whole time. And just the smile on his face. I was like, Yeah, that tells me what I need to know. So, you know, and he beat us by like three seconds, three and a half seconds. I was like, I mean, I know where I can find the three and a half, four seconds easy. But that was still a hell of a run that he made. Uh, so him and I were on the front row, and, you know, Saturday morning is supposed to be the prelim race. You know, you race, you qualified to get your start order in the prelim race Saturday morning, and then you race the main on Saturday afternoon based on your finish order in the prelims, kind of, you know, just heat racing, basically. So qualifying was good. Everything was great. No problems. Car ran great. No problems there. I think we ran like a 149 minute 49 something like that so so not bad i think we could have probably been 142 144 looking at the video of it um 
but not bad, not bad for not having been on the course since practice and it getting rutted in and then kind of getting out there and going, whoa, hold on. <laughs> this is not the course I ran in practice. Those eight laps I did in practice. Yeah. Um, but we did pretty good. I was pretty happy with it. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, within, man, a quarter of the first lap, um, something was not right with the car. I could tell something wasn't right. And, um, you know, heard a noise. It wasn't repetitive noise, but I heard, I heard a noise that I'm, I, I don't want to hear <laughs> that I'm, that I'm not used to hearing. And anytime I hear a noise in that race car, that I'm not used to hearing that's, that sends up red flags, but the car was still driving, but it was loose. And I'm like, mm, I think I might've broken axle shaft here. Um, I could tell I was way, way loose. I mean, stuff that I should be able to just push turn through the turn. Um, I dang near one, I dang near 360 the car like twice in a turn. And I'm like, I don't have four wheel drive. I, I don't have four wheel drive right now. So, um, and I called over the radio, told her, I was like, Hey, something's not right front. Something's not right in the front end. I heard a noise. Something's not right. Um, you know, at this point I'm just thinking, you know, we just got to nurse this thing through the prelim race and, and kind of, you know, I'm already thinking these things. We're going to just fight from the back in the main, which I knew was going to suck. Yeah. Cause as we said, it was really hard to pass there. I was like, eh, it's not going to be ideal, but you know, we'll nurse it through. And, you know, so I was like, just, just guide me through. I don't want to mess up anybody's race. We'll take a, we'll take a different line in the rocks. We'll get out of everybody's way. Like, that's just what it is. It sucks, but it is what it is. And I got in the rocks and everything was fine. I actually found a pretty decent line through the rocks. Um, and when I got out of the rocks, we get going up the hill and I'm, I hear it. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, it's just really loud and it's hitting the bottom of the floor. And I'm like, I think this is a drive shaft. And right about that time, Rob comes over because now he can see me because I'm right in front of him. And he goes, you lost the front drive shaft. Uh, so I pull up the hill and pull off the course, get to a safe spot, get out and find out that the axle tube, so the short side tube and the center section had spun back on the passenger. The long side tube had spun. So basically the long side tube was stationary. Ooh. Everything on passenger side was fine. Driver side mm-hmm. had rotated back and down. And when it rotated back and down, it put the front drive shaft in a bind and broke the U-joint. And the drive shaft had then popped up and taken out a trans cooler fitting. Not a big deal, but it, that's what it had taken out. It wasn't a pressure line. It was just lined to the cooler, so it wasn't pressurized. So it wasn't like spraying trans fluid everywhere. And I'm thinking, man, we're done. We're just freaking done. And we start looking at it, and, you know, credit to Rob because he had the idea. He's like, you know, if we heat this up. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably spin it back. We could probably spin <laughs> that thing back around. And I'm like, dude, that's you're crazy. Like, we probably sheared off the... We probably sheared the freaking well, the these 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 welds that basically hold the tube to the center section, um, and I'm pretty sure those have broke off, and that's because no other way, no way other that this thing spins and everything else stays good, because like everything else was fine, nothing else broke, like the limit strap's fine, the brake line's good, the coil was eh, it was weird, but it was it was it was mechanically fine, the shock was fine, like everything was fine mechanically, and I'm like, maybe he's got a point here maybe 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 so we get it back so like let's just get it back to camp let's kind of just do a quick evaluation let's see what we can do because i'd rather be out there in last place having to fight up than not make it at all um so we get back we start yeah, pulling, yanking on it we've got um brad goodfellow from from warren sergio comes over we've got john rance the whole team from rance's team was down at camp like tom biddle came over like this was the epitome of sportsmanship I mean, John Rance is down there staring at the car like, what do you guys need? Like, do you need a bolt? Do you need this? Do you need that? He's bringing, he's bringing stuff. I was like, do you have an oxyacetylene torch? He goes, no, I don't have that, but you can help us with that. <laughs> uh, but these guys are down there at our camp. Like, Biddle stops me on the way back in. He goes, hey, what happened? Do you need anything? Like, whatever you need, man. Like, we're out. I blew up my transfer case. So if you need anything, whatever you need, man. His wife's there. They're just, like, awesome, freaking awesome people, like. You know, that's forty six. I can for gripe you. about what Ultra Four did with the live feed, and I can gripe about the drama. Though I can gripe about that, and I will. Mm-hmm. But one thing I cannot complain about is the sportsmanship, and it's not. I see it more in forty six hundred because I'm in it, mm-hmm. but I know that it exists in virtually every class to at least some degree. It was insane. It was insane. When you, I mean, the guy that I was supposed to start next to, the literally the dude that I was battling with, mm-hmm. that. I was only a few seconds behind, and I'm sure from his standpoint, it's like, yeah, this dude could smoke me. This this guy, we could we could race each other, and he's out there doing everything he can to help me because those guys, all of them, are like, look, I'd rather beat you on the track than in the garage. That's and he said yeah, that absolutely, and it's just impressive, man. And I know they're like that, and I shouldn't be surprised, but it's just, and I'm not surprised, but I'm impressed 
every time something like that happens because I've been on the other side of it wanting to help somebody. I've been on the side where people have wanted to help me. And it just, man, I just, it's just, it's super impressive. So um, everybody jumped in. I ended up driving into town to buy an oxyacetylene torch. <laughs> and it actually went out and I bought the, so I bought the oxyacetylene kit and it has these empty bottles in it. I take the box out to the truck. I undo it. And I take the empty bottles back inside the tractor. I was like, hey, I need to exchange these bottles. And they're like, wait, you just buy like, yeah, it's out there in the parking lot. I just need to exchange these bottles. Right. I need this oxy torch right freaking now. Like I need this thing. So, I mean, one of the guys from the other team from 4620, um, brand new racer, never raced before. One of his buddies was a mechanic at, I want to give them a shout out. I think it's Happy Trails Off-Road in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, I think that's where those guys are from. So I want to give them a shout out, Ryan. And, and I did not get the dude's name that was over there, but he comes over there, drives, grabs the bad drive shaft, grabs the good, grabs a good drive shaft that somebody had donated and was going to swap, was in the middle of swapping out U-joints when, mm-hmm. we, when we ran out of time. We actually got the axle spun. We got the axle spun back. We did. Um, and we had another team, 4688, that brought us a carnage welder. Um, unfortunately, the carnage welder wasn't fully charged. And with that thick of metal welding, we were able to spin it back around. We were able to preheat the cast because we were going to be welding um, to cast, you know, regular you know, steel, steel to cast. Mm-hmm. And uh, we got it preheated. We got everything good. And it just, the, the welder just wouldn't get penetration in that kind of, that thickness of that steel that that wall thickness of that tube and we just ran out of time so we did get the axle spun back we did have a fix for the drive shaft um but didn't end up didn't end up needing it we got it back drivable got it back on there um but no we just we just ran out of time because you only had this happened in the prelim race and the main race was like three hours three and a half hours later so we just ran out of time before we had to go up there and get it so i ended up being a spectator on the bleachers which was really really weird um because it looked, them boys were out there racing. And then when it came race time, that was a heck of a race. So John Rance won the prelim, kind of ran away with the prelim. Everybody kind of settled in during the prelim where they were going to be and just kind of went on. So Sergio ended up moving up into my spot in the second spot and took that. And so him and Rance started on the front row. And they kind of battled back and forth for that first lap. Sergio got in front of him. Then um, Rance got back in front of him. And they went into the rocks. And everybody was in the rocks. and Sergio's got a JL. We all know that JL have have some weird things, some weird problems. And 4655 went into limp mode at the end of the rocks. And Schaefer came up behind him and actually, I guess, like, push started him. Give him a little bump. <laughs> he hit him <laughs> as Sergio's halfway out of the rocks. And, like, it's all of a sudden 4655 just cranked up and started going. And they got up the hill. They made a little bit of contact up the hill. And going around the last turn on lap one to come back in to start finish, Sergio got in a rut. One of the ruts I was talking about and got in it pretty hard, tried to correct, and the left side came up and he went over. And it's a downhill turn to the left that kind of goes down and falls away from you. So if you start going over, the track's going away from you. So you're done. And he took a he took a pretty nasty roll. I know it's going around social media a little bit. I think um I think Chris Corbett at NATO got a video of it and was kind of posting it in some places. And Rock Crawler posted it on their page, I think, yesterday. Um, but it took a nice, nice little roll right front to left rear. Is kind of how it went. Um, so the right front's pretty damaged up. Um, one of the limit straps broke, so obviously the the shock broke. And everything over there that would have limited the down travel of the axle broke. The spare tire came off. A little body damage to the left rear broke a light, stuff like that. But, I mean, honestly, considering how bad it tumbled, it's fixable. It's totally fixable. Yeah, They're going to need some body parts. Obviously, that left mm-hmm. rear, you're not going to replace that. You're just going to bang it out. I talked to mm-hmm. J.P., at rock crawler about it and he's like you know we're just gonna have to do what we did to 4699 bang it bang it out and put the armor back over it because it's got next venture armor on it the armor's fine like yet again we shout out next venture motorsports on another car besides 4699 this time on 4655 because dude that thing went and the armor's fine like pull the armor off bat out bat, bash out some of the sheet metal put the armor back on it and and do it again unfortunately it did not have next venture armor in the front corner so that is going to have to be the grill. Uh, it looks like a one-eyed wonder now. The grill, the hood. It lost its mm-hmm. hood latches, like just random mm-hmm. stuff. Um, and then, but again, you know, you fix the brake line, uh, put a new shock in it. Um, there was a little bit of damage to the sway bar link there. Um, not a ton. We actually got the spring back in it. It was actually drivable. It just didn't really have brakes because of the broken brake line. Uh, but he drove it. He actually drove it. I followed him all the way back in my truck. He drove it back to camp, drove it on the trailer. 
Oh. That's such a Sergio thing to do, too. Oh, absolutely. But he was fine. Like, he was out there. He was looking <laughs> at it. I pulled up to him. I was like, bro, why aren't you racing? Like, we got it back over on four wheels. Why aren't you racing? And he just kind of looks. So I was like, well, what for the brake line? Well, <laughs> well the brake yeah. line. You got to stop at some point. Like, look, that's after the race, bro. <laughs> that's after the race. But, I mean, he tried like hell to say. You could see it in the video. He's like, I tried to go right, and then it couldn't, and then it was over, and then it was in slow-mo, and it was done. It was over. There was nothing. It lifted. It came up. It's a two-door. It's It's got a pretty high lift height on it because, you know, these cars are have to be built for the desert and all the up travel and stuff, too. So it's not like you can set them to two and a half inches, the lowest you can possibly get. You These things jump. We need up travel. So you got to lift them a little higher. So um, just by the nature of what it is, I, I don't think anybody else would have had a different outcome. Maybe 40, you know, with the four-door, I'm a little bit better off. I can do, I can do a little bit different things in the turns because of the wheelbase, you know, being – being a foot longer, that makes a difference. Um, it, you know, you don't think it makes that big of a difference, but it does. I also weigh well over, I weigh over a thousand pounds more. So that's a thousand pounds keeping me better on the ground and longer wheelbase. So um, track width, we're the same. We run basically, we both run axles from Curry, um, different styles, but the same width. So um, maybe 99 would have made it through there. Definitely not by the skill of the driver, just by the build of the car. Um but good on Sergio to act, to keep it from going any further. He did crank that wheel and stopped it from going any further. He stopped it kind of right in the middle. And he was fine, luckily. Um, and then uh, the race continued. Obviously, they had a local caution there. Race continued. Rance looked like he was going to run away with it there because everybody kind of got backed up behind that. Rance got in front of that. So there was this big gap now. Well, the Bronco went in limp mode. Oh, no. <laughs> Several laps <laughs> in. Yep. Schaefer was trying to check. Schaefer then kind of kind of assumed second place. It was really behind between John Schaefer and Alex Fleming and the 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 forerunner there for a while. Um, mm -hmm. Schaefer looked like he was giving it about all she had. Like he was giving old orange all she had. Come to find out later, he lost the belt again. Like it was overheating. Like that old car, man. I don't know how it keeps running, but for whatever reason, that car has a destiny to be on the podium when it goes. So yeah. Um, but when Rance, yeah, when Rance went into limp mode, um, John got around him and actually ended up lapping him. Um, I guess, I don't know if he knew he lapped him because their comms were going out. His co mm -hmm. his spotter told me later, he's like, I don't even think John knew that he had lapped Rance because he was trying to push. It, on the last lap, Rance got around him because um, Schaefer was giving it all he had, but that only put John Rance back on the lead lap. Mm -hmm. It didn't put him in second place. But... He gave. He just pushed, and by get by passing him, then he was able to get one more lap, and pass Scott Farley in his XJ to take third place. Wow! To take, which was I was like, that's crazy. That's just that's why you don't give up, man. That because no. Rance mm -hmm. stood there dead in the water for sixty seconds. I mean, yeah. dead in the water. Um, but it just goes to show course. you a couple of things. Yeah, never give up. It also tells me that John Rance is a hell of a driver. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And it tells me that we that knew Bronco that already. Got, yeah, oh, well, yeah, we already knew that. That whole family can drive. And it tells me that that Bronco is a very well built Bronco. Um, and he's racing that thing with a freaking manual. Like, I saw I him miss some that. shifts. Yeah, he That's missed some awesome. shifts. <laughs> he definitely missed a couple of shifts. But I'm like, of all the things that are going through my head in a race, mm -hmm. I really don't want to add what gear am I in. Yeah. I, I, no. That's not something man, I would want to do. Kudos to him, either. John. Yeah. If you're listening to this, man, you are my, you're my hero, man. I don't know how That's you awesome. do it. And I don't know what weirdness in your brain made you decide to buy a manual. <laughs> I don't know, man. There's something off in your head, but I love it, and I respect the hell out of you for it. So, <laughs> oh yeah. But he did get back on the lap, but he didn't get any further than that. So he took third. I think Alex Fleming got second. So you had, um, you basically had, other than Rance, like, you know, two cars that I don't think most people thought would be on the podium at the end of the day. But you had Schaefer mm -hmm. win the race. You had Alex Fleming. I, I believe it was Alex Fleming in the old forerunner taking mm -hmm. second. And then John Rance coming back around Scott Farley on the old XJ because, I mean, Farley had it, but Farley had engine issues. So, like, he's having engine issues. He's puffing out smoke. Here comes John Rance on a tear. Man, it was exciting. It was – it was. they should have had a live feed. The 4,600 feet was, was exciting. I checked so many times for a live feed, too. I mean, Just, he had 30 seconds. If he would have passed mm. John Schaefer 30 seconds later, he would have been in – he would have been in the wrong position relating to Schaefer, and he wouldn't have been able to go out for his last lap. So, but because he passed Schaefer, uh, he was able to go out for his last lap. And because he had that last lap, he was able to come in and finish chasing down Scott Farley mm -hmm. and and took third and took third because of that. So, man, it was just That's awesome. It was pretty exciting to watch as a spectator. Uh, I didn't like being a spectator. Uh, I don't want to do that again. 
I don't want to do that again. I don't want to do that again. Hopefully, if I said it three times, I just Beetlejuice it. I'm not going to have to do it. But, right. yeah, that part sucked, especially since the car was just, the car was so fast. Yeah. The car was just so fast. Well, at least um, you got to so, spectate and uh, see everything that happened and, and kind of have yes. a, a, you know. I was left in the dark on Saturday. I was I was sitting there watching. I was updating Facebook. I mean, I probably updated Facebook 20 times throughout the day just to see if any of the feeds were working. Updated YouTube. I was looking at Ultra Ford's YouTube channel. Just nothing out there. I did see Pam go live for a little bit, but it was just kind of yep. like walking around, which yep. Pam, if you're listening to this, thank you for trying to give us something. Um, but it was it was a little disheartening to see that there was no live coverage, especially because even at the regional races last year, uh, live coverage was was awesome. There was in-car footage. Like, there, was just, Phenomenal. there was just some yeah. cool stuff yep. Yep. that uh, that when I can get my now wife uh, into it and she's watching it with me and she's cheering you on, like, you know, you're doing something right to keep an attention like that. And uh, so it was a little disheartening not to see that. So I hope, I really hope um, Ultra 4 kind of takes a lead on that. This coming up with the next races uh, and has some kind of production crew there that's capable of doing live feed. Um, if not, maybe that's just more opportunity for people to go out and watch this. Um, but it would nice be nice to see it uh, alive again. Yeah, I think if you're going to say, if you're going to relegate Ultra 4 to kind of this this lower tier series, um, and, and it's going to kind of be this budget series, then, then I see I see the point of saying, well, we're not going to have a live coverage because we're not trying to get this, we're not trying to get this to a national audience. But at the same time, I see them putting up, you know, a lot of king flags on the racetrack and Nitto and mm -hmm. Holly and Holly was the primary sponsor and I'm going... But you got some you've got some big names that you're trying to attach to this. You already brought out two of the main people that are your on air personalities for this production. You obviously there was drones flying over us. We saw the drones. Mm -hmm. There was guys with cameras out there. Like I don't know how much more it would have cost to to do that. Um, but I gotta think, and that's not my world. You're you're way into more into that world than I am. But I gotta think that you could have figured out a way to do that, and and I could be wrong, and 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 if I am, my bad. If it's a, if it's fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars to go live on Facebook, it's complicated for a hours. to do. Yeah, it's complicated to do a live stream to the to the level they were doing it last year. It is very complicated. You're talking about a a multi person crew um, that just, I mean, probably upwards of twenty people that have to be perfectly in sync all day the wireless connection has to be perfectly in sync. Like everything has to go spotless and it's kind of hard to do that um, without a pretty expensive crew, but hopefully it's good to know that there were cameras out there. There were drones rolling. So maybe we'll get like maybe an old style ultra four video where they do a recap and everyone gets to watch it at the end and, and, you know, see exactly what happens. Um, they did put something cool. out. They did put kind of a post-produced short video out yesterday, I think, on their Facebook page. Um, so I didn't get into watching all that. Again, I didn't watch it because I just didn't want to relive it. I was tired of having people call me and text me, how'd the race go? How'd the race go? And I'm like, it didn't shut up. Um, knowing that I was going to have to do this and talk about it. Yeah, I'm actually in the the group, the one group that you posted the the pictures in asking for. Oh, torch. you saw that? Um, it's a private group, but yeah, somehow I was let in. Yeah, yeah I saw that. Uh, and as soon as I saw that, I was like, mm, I am not texting Doug all weekend about any of this. I'm going to let this ride into, <laughs> and talk to him Monday. <laughs> it, was, it was not good. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I posted in a private, you know, kind of a rock sports group. Uh, some some people are in that. A lot of, Obviously, most people aren't. I posted pictures of the carnage, and I said, hey, does anybody in the garage area <laughs> have an oxyacetylene torch? We're going to try and heat this axle tube up. And we literally hooked. Now, we had the official guys from Warren out here doing this. So we were like being legit. We hooked a winch to the top of the sea at the front of the, at the front of the race car to my truck. We hooked mm -hmm. a winch at the back, at the bottom of the seat at the back to try to pull. And when it wasn't hot, it just would not move. It would, I mean, we tried everything. We tried doubling the force. We tried everything. We tried chalking boards. It was pulling the truck, pulling the jig. It just wasn't working. That's why we needed the oxyacetylene torch. Cause we couldn't get the axle to rotate. And I'm like, well, Hell, if it would have stayed this nice during the race, I wouldn't have this problem. <laughs> it should be fine. <laughs> we got it to heat up. We yeah. actually used the entire bottle of acetylene. It's empty. Like we used the whole twenty minute wow. burn time to heat the tube up enough to move it, and we got it about ninety percent there. We got it enough there to the point where I was like, "I'll race on that." If we could have gotten it welded and had time, I would have raced on it. I would have felt 
you know, my big thing was I don't want to go out unsafe. I don't want to go out and do something stupid and be the rate, be the reason somebody else's race goes bad. But if I can get out there and do it in a safe manner and I can be safe and I can maintain pace, I don't mind fighting from the back. Hell, it might be fun. It'll be muddy, but it'll be fun. And, and if I could get a podium out of that, so be it. Uh, but I'd rather just be out there than than not mm-hmm. be out there at all. So, for sure, uh, absolutely. So many people doing everything they could to get us back on racetrack. Uh, we would def we would not have even gotten it close to where we did without them. Uh, but at some point, you know, you got a race to go to, and and those guys got to go. You know, Rance had to go get back in his car. Sergio had to go get in his car. Schaefer had to get in his car. His crew, you know, those guys had to leave, and you know, it, we just ran out of time. We just simply ran out of time. I was like, man, if we'd have just had another hour or if something would have happened up at the track and something, you know, would have taken knocked down the track for 34. We could, we could have made it, we could have made it, but you know, it is what it is. That was the time was what the time was and, and the fix didn't get done. We didn't get it done in time. And you know, the consequence of that was we didn't get to race. So, um, but we did get the axle turned. We, we, we are, we have a list of things that we're going to do to make sure that that never happens again. Cause that's racing. Once you break it, you build it back better. Um, you know, there for all of the the reasons of why we were running it the way we were running it and the setup we had, um, I'll, I'll say that there were reasons from a business standpoint that we were running the setup on the front the way we were. I won't get much more into it than that, but there was reasons we were running the front setup the way the front setup was. There's a reason we run the axles we run. There's a reason they were set up the way they're set up, and those go way deeper than just that's what I wanted. Um, that said, we are going a different route now. <laughs> <laughs> now yeah. we will be running those axles the way that I want them run. We will be building the axles the way I want them built and the way I want them in the car. So that will no longer be a problem starting in Badlands here in what, five weeks? Something like that. Yeah. Um, so that is not it's a right problem. around the corner. It's close. So that is not a problem that we will have. Uh, we will have a brand new, we will not just repair that drive shaft. We will repair that drive shaft and use it as a spare because it was just a bad U joint. The drive shaft's fine. Uh, we've already replaced the transmission fitting. Uh, thanks to, you know, John Rance and Mudnut Racing for that. They brought us the fitting. It worked perfectly. And it wasn't even like a a fit, a, a fix where it's like a temporary thing. They brought us a brand new fitting. Oh, like, solid. It was perfect. That's fixed. So that's all done. Um, all we really need to do is now that we're back in the shop, we actually can get the axle turned back as far as I want it. We have the tools to do that here. We'll get that whole thing gusted it up, welded the way I want it. We're gonna do some. We're gonna do a couple other things too, um, to get that thing ready. You know, time provided, and we'll have that thing back ready for Indiana. And that is not a problem that we will have again. That much yeah. I can say, that will right. not be a problem again. We will learn from that. We will make it bigger, better, um, and we yeah we we won't fall prey to that again for sure. Well, good. I'm looking forward to the next race for sure. Um, hopefully, we got some live stream stuff sorted out. If not. I'll rely on whatever information I can, like the good old days, <laughs> like the good old days. So, yeah, that's um, that's, that's pretty impressive. I still, I'm still kind of blown away, honestly. That forty six eighty eight, it took another finish line. <laughs> it's insane. That is the most decorated the, car in forty six hundred yeah. class history. Yeah, it's 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 the little engine that could, man. That thing just keeps going and keeps going on. And and John, congrats, dude. You're a great driver, fucking badass driver, man. And Sergio, that dude, he just here. knows every square inch of that car. A hundred percent. The car's ten years old, 100%. man. I think this yeah. is either his ninth or tenth season race. I think it was built by Savvy back in I think fifteen, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. That sounds about I'm right. Like what? That's great. Yeah. And that the, the amount of hardware that that car has pulled down, man. I know. I know Ford is coming in the last few years, and the Bronco's a great platform, and it's racing. It's winning a lot of hardware. You ain't won a fraction of the hardware that forty six eighty eight's won, boys. You got and you got yep. a long way to go before you can get <laughs> before you can get up on that mountain. We all do. We all do. Yeah. And it's done yeah, it it's... in multiple disciplines. It's done it in the rocks. It's done it in the mud. It's done it in the trees. It's done it on the short course. It's done. It's just done it. It's done it at KOH. Everything that little two door. It's it's the little two door that could ha- man. Hasn't he taken that thing to Baja as well? Absolutely. I think it has gone to Baja. Yeah. yeah. I think it has. <laughs> It's insane, man. I love it. It's absolutely I insane. love it. And John's it's, driven it. Sergio's it's, driven it. It's just, it's impressive, man, to see that car and you get underneath of it. I've been under it several times. I've been in it. It's so simple. It's so simple. And it's just, it's just a little billy goat, man. It, it's light. It stays on top of things. It's agile. Mm-hmm. It's quick. You know, you're not going to be doing any zero to 60 clocks, right? Like, it can't, you know, if you put, you know, you put 99 and 88 on a drag, tr- drag strip, 
100 times out of 100, 99 wins. You know, you put that where speed matters and horsepower, 99 wins 100 times out of 100. Yeah, but like but you said in a, a previous episode. In racing, that's not all that matters. Speed isn't all that matters. It's not all that matters. Mm, it's nah. not even close to all that matters. Clearly, yeah. clearly it's not all that matters. So, um, <laughs> yeah. You know, well, again, congrats, John, on that win. Absolutely. And uh, Absolutely. That, that was pretty awesome. I, I loved hearing that. Also loved hearing that another Team RK member got the got the podium on that. Sergio, hope if you're listening to this, man, I'm sorry, but get him with the next one. Uh, it's racing. People roll. People flop. It's okay. Uh, but I, I'm really happy to hear that that's going to be at Jeep Beach because being in a sea of um, ducks and paint matched everything and 24s and, and lights there. out, <laughs> every one of the lights on at one time, and then that's there, and then people are like, whoa, what's what's this? And then you're Bro, like, yeah, you this, is, this is what it's about, man. <laughs> So, yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the season. I'm looking forward to seeing how you do and how the rest of Team RK does. Um, I think it's going to be a good season. Uh, I hate that this hiccuped for you because I was, I was hoping that this being kind of your backyard from your, oh, your hometown, man. this yeah. would be a, you know, be a really cool race to, to finish been. on top of. But, <laughs> but we'll get them. We'll get them next time. I'm glad the, the 4699 is getting fixed um, and this won't happen again. So. Well, on to the next one and uh, a a, a little, I don't know if this is a tease. Some people know we've actually, we had conversations began this past weekend about putting 99 in the Jeep speed class at the Baja 1000 this year. Oh, I 100% agree with that. We have, I support it. We've got some budget (laughs) things to work out and all that, but the people that I've talked to, I think we're, Mm -hmm. I think we've got a pretty solid plan to try to make that happen. Um, we, we know we've always known we were going to do the mint 400 next year between myself and Jeremy Purick. We knew we were going to do that, but the Baja 1000 is just that iconic race. It's a loop race this year. It's Ensenada to Ensenada. Um, the Jeep speed class is just, there, just begging me, man. It's just begging me. Absolutely. The Jeep speed 2700 not? class, uh, which I could actually do a few more things to 99 and it would still be mm-hmm. uh, legal for that class. So that is what we are looking at is running in the Jeep Speed class for the Baja 1000 with a couple. We would have, um, I think where we're at now is three driver teams. Um, that would be, um, obviously, me and Rob would be one driver team. We'd probably do take the green flag and run that. And then we would uh, switch over a third of the way through to Jeremy Purick and Jake Glazer from Savvy. Uh, Jake would co-drive for Jeremy, get back in the car, which Jeremy's driven 4699 before for the middle part. And then uh, for the last part, Sergio uh, and Justin from Warren and Vector 55 bringing it home to the checkered flag uh, I love back that. in Ensenada. So I love that. We still got some, you know, we got some comm stuff to work out. We got some sponsor stuff to work out because that's all separate, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, when you have sponsors for the Ultra Four race, it's different because this is after se- season's over by then. Yeah. You know, our season ends in October in Davis, Oklahoma. And then it's a whole nother thing. So rather than bring it down, take it down, you know, tear it down and get ready for hammers. Uh, we got to bring it back and immediately prep and turn right around and go at, go again in two weeks to freaking mm-hmm. Baja 1000. Right. Um, so that's going to be a whole nother thing. And that's totally different. Whole nother set of challenges, whole nother set of things on the car, different things on the car. Um, who knows? Who knows? So, but we're starting on that now because we've got what we've got like six months to get that figure, get that figured out. Yeah. And that'll come um, up very quickly. <laughs> it's gonna, uh, oh, so, dude, don't I know it? Don't I know? So I'll it, go. So. so what you're saying is I need to go get my passport, get that ready. I think so I, I need so. to upgrade camera set, gear. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've already talked so. to, I've already talked to all the drivers that would be involved. Everybody's on board. Mm-hmm. I've already spoken to a couple of marketing partners, some sponsors. Um, everybody's on board that I've talked to so far. I've got more meetings to have more phone calls. Um, there, there needs to be more stuff, more marketing decks need to go out because mm-hmm. <laughs> Baja, Baja is expensive, man. It is. It's an international race. It is. You know, mm-hmm. it's a thousand mile race just for that race. We're going to need, we're going to need f- five to $6,000 in race car fuel. Yeah. Sounds about just right. Just for fuel. Just for fuel. Not, you're not talking about chase trucks. You're not talking about pit support. You're not talking about comms. You're not talking about the entry fee, which is more than any ultra four race is. Um, so there's, there's some stuff that needs to be worked out. So. Um, obviously that's going to be something I've got to get on here in the next couple of weeks. I did give some, I did drop some hints to some other marketing partners and said, Hey, I'm just, just so you know, I am going to be calling you in the next 30 days, asking you for money. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. But, but for something cool. 1, 000, yeah, absolutely. 1, Such an iconic race. I would argue probably 
the most. probably the most iconic mm-hmm. off road race. I mean, next to the Baja um, 500, which started that whole deal. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, when I you think, when you think about off road racing, I think the Baja 1000 is the name that stands out among everything you've. I think internationally, you've got the Dakar. There, mm-hmm. There's some other big races mm-hmm. internationally, but certainly in the United States, which you know that's our market. You know, we're we're a United States based company. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think in the U.S., even people that don't know off road and don't know racing, they've heard of the Baja 1000. Yeah, um, it, it's it's a long race. It's a grueling race. You're talking about to win in the Jeep Speed Class. You're talking twenty twenty eight to thirty two hours. Yeah, that sounds about right. Neighborhood to mm-hmm. win, and that that will win you the race. Um, it's just grueling. So each 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 driving team is going to be in that car for like ten hours. Yeah, so it's like lot. three kohs back to back Ooh. to back. Yeah, that's a lot yeah. of driving. So yeah. there's a lot to get ready for, and six months. You know, six months. That's about what it's going to take probably to prepare for it and get make mm-hmm. sure we got the right parts in the car, make sure we got the right team assembled and the right comms and the right everything, mm-hmm. you know, everything. So looking forward to that. Um, and then, you know, that's the end of the season. Then we break it back down and do it all over again next year. Yep. So, <laughs> where we'll be, who, what we'll do, who knows? I don't know where we're going to be next year. I just know that 4699 is going to race somewhere, something. and try Some to way, some somehow. Way. You're, some you're going to be somewhere, racing. Somehow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gonna, gonna have to do that. So, um, that, I'm trying to think, did I miss anything? I don't think, there was just, there was so much that went on this weekend. Yeah. But I think we got it all covered. Um, even though there wasn't a live feed, this was your post live feed live right. feed that wasn't live <laughs> whatever um yeah that's all i got unless you had did i cover everything that i answer all the questions anybody you think anybody might have had about the race i, I think you covered everything it was a solid race recap um like i said we'll, we'll have another one on the next race and you know keep it going i do want to say since this is kind of the you know we'll say the race cap the race recap we don't go racing obviously we don't have these things without our marketing partners specifically the big ones for us is you know we talked about team rock crawler um, without rock crawler, a, n- neither 4699 or 4655 would have never been built. Um, and they continue to support us race after race, after race, after race, not just with, with product support, but with advice. I mean, JP was on the phone with me as soon as he knew I had a problem. JP was on the phone with Sergio as soon as he knew he had a problem. Um, it was JP was literally on the phone, like, Hey, try this, try that, do this, do that. Um, and, and we absolutely used some of those ideas, even though he was having a really, 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 really bad day himself. He took time out of his day to call me and talk to me through our issues and call Sergio and talk to Sergio and then called me back about Sergio's car and 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 was already talking about ordering parts. So cannot thank Rock Crawler uh, suspension enough. Next Venture Motorsports, again, talked to Dan while I was in Kentucky. Uh, Dan Ford from there. Of course, we've had him on the show here. Those guys. And and he's one of the ones already, too, that's super stoked about Baja. He's like, whatever. <laughs> like the dude just wants to the dude just wants to prove his product, man. And, and that is so awesome to have. So awesome to have those guys on board. And then other companies, you know, we don't put power to the ground without Raceline wheels and Mickey Thompson tires. Those guys, we didn't have a tire issue. We didn't have a wheel issue. Jump in that thing. Again, DOT tires, guys. DOT tires and wheels you can buy off the shelf. And we're out there jumping stuff. Like five, six, seven times a lap, we're putting things airborne. And while I didn't make the race, I did make practice. And I did make qualifying. And I did make the prelim race. And that thing went airborne 50, 60, 70 times, and we didn't have a problem. We didn't lose, we didn't, we didn't lose a pound of air, none of that stuff. Um, pretty awesome stuff. And then um, <clears throat> luckily, our team didn't need it. Other teams did. Um, H3R Performance with our safety equipment and safety gear. Uh, there was one car that did catch fire. Uh, so we're always happy to have safety equipment and safety gear on board, in our case being H3R Performance. And then, of course, uh, American Iron Off-Road. Uh, Alyssa Payson from American Alpha actually texted me while I was out there as well. Um, I'll, you know, whatever I needed, you know, hey, do you need this part? We're going to ship you this. We're going to do that. So it's just really good to have sponsors and marketing partners that are just that active in the sport and wanting to check in on you, wanting to see what you need, wanting to know, you know, because they, you know, first of all, they're crazy enough to put their parts in a race car that that I drive. <laughs> right. I mean, you're already a little off your rocker, uh, <laughs> but then to continue to want to uh-huh. do that, be like, yo, what what else can we do? Um, can't say enough about those, those people. And then obviously Warren and factor 55, simply because, you know, I race with Warren racing and then Brad being with Warren and being out there and right there with 4699 trying to help us fix that car. He was a big, big part of us trying to fix that car. Um, just real thankful to have them guys along and they're just, just good people. Um, while also being a great company that makes great products. 
that are all put out there, sold and marketed by great people. So that's pretty good trifecta there. So um, just, I just want to make sure that we hit on those companies for sure, because without those guys, uh, 46, our, our, our racing would be a lot different. And the level of success that we were able to attain last year uh, and that we hope to attain this year would not be possible without those guys. So uh, support those who support us. If you want a winch, go buy a warm winch. If you need, you know, you need some safety gear, go buy an X3R Performance, you know, fire extinguisher. You need a suspension, go look at Rock Crawler Suspension, Raceline Wheels, Mickey Thompson Tires. Go look at these companies. <laughs> All the plugs. Um, they're well, well, you know, I just, I respect the company who's willing to put their stuff through that much crap with me behind yeah, the wheel. Absolutely. The least mm-hmm. I can do is try to help them push their product because they are helping push me down the racetrack as I go. So I'm super thankful for those guys and that they're involved and they, and that they seem to like us enough to keep wanting to keep wanting to go racing with us. Um, use them. And then of course, as we always have to thank, uh, we have to thank our listeners and the people who watch and the people who listen. Thank you. All of you, uh, who stopped by to spend your 45 minutes to an hour with us. Uh, if it's your first time, welcome. Thank you. And uh, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, comment, share, do all the things, all the things, you know, you're supposed to do on all the platforms. We've got uh Kelly will tell me from We got Spotify. I guess now it's not Google play anymore. Now it's YouTube, YouTube podcast. Nope. Yep, YouTube right. podcast, which we've already we've which already Google got that YouTube, covered. So now they just rebranded. I guess yeah. it's just a rebrand. It's just a rebrand. It's um, just a rebrand. It's just yeah, a rebrand. and That's then awesome. obviously Apple Podcast and YouTube itself as the video where you're able to watch. In addition to YouTube podcast, where you can listen. So thank you to all of you. Please subscribe. Help us grow this as we want to bring you as much content as we possibly can. But for this week, yeah, we've got some cool content coming up too. I know. I saw the idea list. I was like, sweet, this one working. This one working. This one working. This is good. This is good. This is good. This is good stuff. So we've got some. So we've definitely we're not, not going to ruin it for everybody, but stay tuned. We've got some really cool episodes mm-hmm. coming up. Uh, maybe some controversial things. Maybe some things we really want your opinions on. But stay tuned. We've got some great stuff coming up for you, Doug. As always, appreciate you taking the lead on this one. Kind of having an easy, easy job today. <laughs> but <laughs> on this one, on this one, I'll get it next time. And and a little plug to Ryan McCutcheon from Atlanta. Good job on the podcast last week, fellas. Oh, phenomenal. I listened to that on the we, way home. I would, I would love to have Ryan back on again. Um, that I, he was great on the podcast. Ryan that, is really good at talking about cheap vehicles. Great. I'm just going to say he's really good at talking about old cheap yeah, vehicles. Hey, that's all. <laughs> you picked a topic, man, that was like right up there. I'm like, this topic and this dude, perfect uh-huh. marriage. Perfect. But you can, t- you can definitely tell no, that Ryan knows what he's talking about when he starts talking about the different things he was talking about on the Porsches and the Toyota. And all. He, he's definitely a, mm-hmm. uh, a wealth of knowledge on that stuff. So. I have no problem giving yeah. up my seat from time to time. And when you get, get somebody quality like that, uh, you know, at that point I start worrying about my job. So we'll see if I can keep my job for a little <laughs> while longer. Um, but yeah, that's it for this episode. We will be back on Friday with a, a, a fairly normal mailbag drop. No special episode. None of that. Just a typical mm-hmm. mailbag drop where we will answer your questions. And then we'll be back Wednesday with another episode of Dirt to Dust. We'll catch you on the next episode. You've been listening to Dirt to Dust. Presented by Outlaw Off-Road. The premier off-road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime... To see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.